So when I was in like middle school, high school, my mom was, um, she was subscribed to this music service called Rhapsody, which was pretty much, it, it was like old school Spotify, but you had to have a subscription to use it. Uh, and it was like rough because my parents had divorced that same year, so I was just going through a lot of shit. And I had been listening to like a lot of different emo bands on uh, on this music service. It was probably my freshman year of high school. Um, I had gone through a recent breakup with like my very first boyfriend. I was abandoning all this punk shit that I'd been listening to for a bit because it reminded me of my boyfriend. And so I went back to listening to a lot of emo music because I was sad. And then uh, Rhapsody, like similar to. Uh, like Last FM had like artist suggestions and it suggested Bright Eyes. The first song I heard was um, Make a Plan to Love Me. So I heard that and I was like, okay, I like this pretty good. Um, and so I just started listening to like different songs off of different albums. Probably my sophomore year of high school, um, I, f I like decided that I really liked Bright Eyes, like, had finally, like, um, completely downloaded, like, all of Casadega and I'm Wide Awake It's Morning, and then I listened to Fevers and Mirrors for the first time. At that point in, like, my high school career or whatever, I was, like, kind of, I don't know, distant from everybody. My freshman year I didn't take any time to find new people because, like, I just became friends with my boyfriend's friends. So, I didn't really have any friends, and I was pretty sad all the time because, like, there were a lot of changes in my home. I heard Fevers and Mirrors, and I was like, oh my god, like, this is everything I've ever wanted in an album. Like, ever. <laughs> it starts with this recording of this boy um, reading this, like, children's book called uh, Mitchell is Moving. And, like, so you hear the first part of that, and it's about like this dinosaur who's moving away from his best friend and it's like really heart-wrenching when you hear this kid like kind of stumbling over reading it and then Connor comes in with his singing and it's like you turn on a spindle so much looser now but you're not explaining how you gain such new repose and like it just goes into all these really heart-wrenching lyrics after that I just kind of like knew that Bright Eyes was my band and I downloaded everything. Everything that had been released I like needed. Bright Eyes is like my go-to band when I'm feeling sad or even just not like there have been so many songs that have like resonated with me in different times of my life. Actually just recently I went home for like a month. It was weird because that was the first time that I was home that I didn't really feel like I was connecting to my friends the same ways before. Um, and the night before I left, like, all of my friends forgot that I was leaving the next day. Like, they asked me several times, like, when are you leaving? When are you going back to Syracuse? And I told them, and then they kind of forgot. And I wasn't about to be like, oh, hey, do you want to hang out? I was just like, you know what? Like, this was kind of what was supposed to happen. I think, like, I just grew apart from these people. And, uh... I'd always really liked Landlocked Blues, like it's definitely one of my favorite Bright Eyes songs, but that night I listened to it and like wept like the hardest I've like cried in a really long time because there's a lyric, um, uh, I feel like a stranger each time I come home and then like the ending verse is like, so I'm up at dawn putting on my shoes, like I'm leaving but I don't know where to. And it's just like, I was about to go on a week-long road trip, like, leaving really early in the morning. Hadn't said goodbye to anybody because, like, I just felt so disconnected. And, uh, <laughs> it, like, struck me to my core. There are a lot of Bright Eyes songs like that. Like, if I listen to them at, a, like, at the right time, it'll just, like, destroy me. There's, like, Entryway Song, which is, like, an early one. My best friend back home, who I don't, like, who I'm not really close to anymore, which is upsetting, like, this song was, like, I felt like it was about him, because he kept me, like, pretty anchored, like, all throughout, like, the ending of my high school situation. And a lot of the chorus is just, like, explaining, like, what this person is to Connor, like, 
There's one, you're the cool of the water, you're the start of the summer, keep me still like an anchor in a storm, you're the cellar. I felt that way about my friend for a while and I don't think I ever told him about that because I thought it would be weird. It'd be even weirder now because we're not really close anymore. Um, I remember when that, that like first solo album came out, like when he, like before he started the Mystic Valley Band. And that album, oh my god, like, <laughs> that was pretty much all I listened to. The nice thing was is that there were a couple of songs on it that uh, that were really emotional, but others that were just like pure, like Danny Callahan, there's um, this lyric like, but the love we feel we carry inside can be passed. See a brother in the gutter, you reach out your hand. It's like so simple and nice, and you don't hear that in music anymore unless it's super twee. <laughs> Life isn't easy, <laughs> and uh, I think that uh, Connor always really gets that, and he he explains it so well. Like I I personally believe he's one of the greatest lyricists of all time because his lyrics are simple but so beautiful and poetic. I I don't he just I don't know like him personally clearly like I don't probably don't know anything about his life, but like, I feel like he... <laughs> it's like he understands me. <laughs> I went to New York City this past October, and uh, it was for like a photo trip, and the last day we were there I was just kind of wandering around before I had to take the bus back to Syracuse, and uh, I was crossing a street, and I was like looking down at my feet, because I'm like, I don't like, making eye contact with people in the city makes me really uncomfortable because they always look angry. <laughs> I look up for, like, a brief moment and then, like, Connor Oberst right there going the opposite direction with, like, a grocery, like, like, those little cart things on wheels. And I was like, we're both in the center of the street in this crosswalk, like, I want to stop him and talk to him. If I had stopped him and talked to him about, like, how much his music has moved me, I would have just wept, like, in the middle of New York City, <laughs> just on the street. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna let him walk by and, like, cherish at least this little moment. Bright Eyes is, like, a part of me. <laughs> That's why I have the Saddle Creek tattoo. 